Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the decomposition of rational Z-transforms. So, we are going to learn what is the specific structure of a, a rational Z-transform when it is decomposed. That is, uh, we will uh, the basically it will help us in analyzing the rational Z-transforms, and this is specifically useful for implementation of discrete time systems. So let us consider a rational Z transform. Consider a rational Z transform. X of Z is equal to summation K is equal to 0 to capital M B K Z power minus K. So that is the uh, polynomial in the numerator. And in the denominator we have 1 plus summation K is equal to 1 to capital N A K z power minus k can also be written in the following form it's a constant multiplied by the product k is equal to 1 to m 1 minus z k that is zeros multiplied by z inverse so that is the uh, factor product form of the uh, polynomial that is the product of the factors of this polynomial and then in the denominator we have some the denominator we have the product k is equal to yeah k is equal to 1 to n 1 minus p k that is poles multiplied by z inverse so that is the uh, factorized form of this uh, rational z transform now uh, let us try to understand what is the nature of this z transform when it is decomposed how do we understand its implication so for example consider the case one where the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to that of the denominator that is m is greater than or equal to n so when m is greater than or equal to n we can rewrite x of z that is m x of z is like an improper fraction so we can write it as x of z is equal to the summation k is equal to 0 to m minus n c k z power minus k plus a proper fraction x p r of z so this part is the proper fraction and m minus n is the extra values that is the extra degree uh, the, it is basically the degree difference that is m minus n m is the numerator degree n is the denominator degree so the difference is m minus n so there are extra m minus n coefficients these are like the integer components when we, div uh, when we decompose an improper fraction so now now consider or assume that the component or the fraction x p r of z has uh, n distinct poles has, has distinct poles poles of the component x p r of z are distinct then we can write it as x p r of z will be equal to a1 divided by 1 minus p1 z inverse it's like a partial fraction expansion so a1 by 1 minus p1 z inverse a2 by 1 minus p2 z inverse and so on and the last one will be a n because this one will be of degree n uh, so it will be a n divided by 1 minus p n z inverse so that is the general structure of x p r of z now if some of the poles are complex then if some of poles that is p k are complex then those complex poles should occur in pairs those poles should be occurring in conjugate pairs so in other words when we combine these two poles we have uh, any two poles that are conjugate of each other we have a by 1 minus p z inverse and then its conjugate will be a conjugate uh, the term corresponding to it the conjugate pole is a conjugate divided by 1 minus p conjugate z power minus 1 so when we combine these two we have a times 1 minus p conjugate z inverse that is the numerator will be a times 1 minus p conjugate z inverse plus a conjugate multiplied by 1 minus p z inverse and then denominator is as usual 1 minus p z inverse multiplied by 1 minus p conjugate z inverse so that is the form of the uh, partial fractions corresponding to a pair of conjugate poles so now we can rewrite this one as let us call b naught as the sum a plus a conjugate so which is obviously always real and then b1 as a p conjugate plus a conjugate p so which is again also real 
and then let us name the denominator coefficients as a0 equal to 1 a1 is equal to minus of p plus p conjugate and finally a2 is equal to p into p conjugate so because of this nomenclature we can say that this component that is the sum of these two partial fractions corresponding to a conjugate pair of poles will be equal to b0 plus b1 z inverse divided by 1 plus a1 z inverse plus a2 note that all the coefficients b0 b1 a0 a1 a2 are all real values even though we have complex pay, uh, complex poles the corresponding uh, fraction when we combine these two partial fractions the combined fraction is basically a ratio of uh, polynomials with real coefficients so that is the advantage next and now another issue is uh, uh, or an advantage is given this partial uh, this ratio that is given this one given let us call this equation one so given equation one or expression one we can easily compute or evaluate the values that is partial fractions values a and the pole value p easily using partial fractions approach so that is another advantage so therefore when x of z that is the uh, original z transform has uh, both real poles and conjugate poles and there are uh, real poles and also complex poles we can rewrite the general structure for x of z as follows when m is greater than or equal to n so the first term will be summation k is equal to 0 to m minus n c k z power minus k that is for the uh, case where m is greater than or equal to n so when m is equal to n this part is basically a constant and m is uh, so and then the summations correspond summation of the partial fractions corresponding to uh, purely real and distinct poles which are assumedly of, of number b k1 that means we assume there are k1 real poles real and distinct poles and then finally we have summation k is equal to 1 to capital k2 uh, b naught k plus b1 k z inverse and the denominator is 1 plus a1 k z inverse plus a2 k z4 minus 2 so this fraction basically corresponds to uh, different con complex conjugate pairs of poles so so we have seen that there are indeed n is equal to capital k1 plus 2 times k2 poles so there are n poles which is equal to k1 plus 2 k2 k1 is the number of real distinct poles and k2 is the uh, number of complex poles and 2 k2 is the number of complex poles so that means all the uh, these uh, 2 k2 poles are complex value uh, results now as i said m is equal to n means basically the first term becomes a constant is m is equal to n means term 1 is a constant and m is less than n that is m is less than n then the first term is basically zero the term one cannot exist so it is zero and then if there are multiple poles in the system if multiple poles that is the same pole repeating uh, that is a repeated pole multiple poles exist that is at the same point we have multiple poles then uh, this the equation have to be modified accordingly needs modification so in the short to summarize in the short video we have looked at a uh, look at the decomposition of a rational z transform so i have considered a z transform x of z with the structure uh, the numerator equal to summation k equal to 0 to m b k z power minus k the denominator equal to 1 plus summation k equal to 1 to n a k z power minus k or in the factorized form that are written in terms of zeros and poles so and if m is greater than or equal to n that is the numerator it has a higher degree then in this case x of z can be written as a sum of two parts first one is basically corresponding to the like uh, integer coefficients uh, that is the integer component of um, improper fraction so here we have summation k equal to 0 to m minus n c k z power minus k and then we have x p r of z where x p r of z, of z is a part of the z transform that corresponds to distinct and real poles or real and distinct valued poles or distinct and real valued poles 
so x square of z can be written as a summation of a, a different partial fractions uh, with the corresponding coefficient so if all of them are real then this is enough but if there are complex poles then we need uh, then we have to understand that the poles occur in conjugate pairs so in that case we can combine the corresponding partial fractions say for example p is a pole and p conjugate is its, is its conjugate pair uh, conjugate valued pole so it's a conjugate pole so in that case we can combine the two partial fractions as a single one where the numerator and denominator has only real coefficients and these real coefficients are given by b not equal to a plus a conjugate b1 is equal to uh, a into p conjugate plus a conjugate into p and a not equal to 1 a1 is equal to minus of uh, p plus p conjugate and a2 is the product of p and p conjugate so we can write the corresponding fraction for this to um, complex poles and similarly the advantage of this structure is that given this uh, ratio we can compute the partial fraction value uh, coefficients on the poles a and p and the general or uh, final structure for x of z when we have m greater than or equal to n is the first term basically uh, without poles that is summation k equal to 0 to m minus n c k z power minus k and the second term and the third term correspond to real poles and complex poles respectively so we assume that there are k1 real poles and k2 2 times k2 complex poles so the total number is n equal to k1 plus 2 k2 so this general structure when m is equal to n uh, the first term becomes a constant and when m is less than n, this first term becomes uh, zero or it vanishes and finally if there are multiple poles that is a repetition of poles then we have to consider that those poles also in the partial fraction expansion so thus we have looked at the decomposition of a rational z transform which is a uh, very useful for uh, implementation of discrete time systems thanks for watching